Alright, Dark Souls style. You know what? I take my chances. <laughs> I take my chances, boys. <laughs> I didn't even scratch the power of it. Hello everyone and welcome to the MGN channel. I've missed you guys so much. Uh, I do apologize. I've been away for quite a few months because of uh, in real life things has happened and I needed to sort that out before I can do anything. So here I am. I'm back and I'm ready to bring up some more reviews and other cool stuff. So let's talk about one in particular game that is more hardcore than Dark Souls. I cannot believe I've said that and that is Mortal Shell. Mortal Shells is a Souls-like action roleplay game where you, you are a creature whose unique ability is inhabited the dead bodies of fallen warriors scattered across the realm of Fulgrim. So the plot of the story is... Honestly, I'll be quite honest with you, I have no idea what the story is. <laughs> there is no indication of what I had to do at the start and where, why I have to, why I'm here and what my purpose is um yeah for me it's it's confusing it's really really confusing and if you are one of those hardcore laws this and like want to know about the story of the game then good luck finding it because this place ain't for you but what i'm here to talk about is a review of the game itself and how good it is and how bad it is so let's start off with the graphics overall the game is majorly pretty. When I first started into the game, it looked great. The sounds, the way the character animations, the way you handle a weapon, and the way that everyone handles a weapon. Um, the enemy's reaction just looks almost human, and I love it. Each animation I've seen so far is always like kind of different from everything. The visuals is very dark and bleak. I like that, and... Especially at the first start with all the fog, it just blended in really, really well. Some of the other locations I've uh, explored have been really interesting. It's a game that is really, really pretty. So let's uh, let's talk about the gear and the equipment. So the, the equipment is very different from other Dark Souls. As you're a vessel, I believe, you need to take control of dead knights by awakening these mortal shells and occupying their bodies. Each mortal shell has different stats and abilities and buffs. There are only, but there is only a few on this game, so compared to like any other games, there are limited to stuff you can only wear. Each armor has a different stance and style and health or stamina costs, so be sure to pick the right one when you are looking around and going into battle. Let's talk about the weapons. Again, there are only a few weapons in the game. Uh, they are scattered all around Fulgrim, and you know what, from what I've seen, they're pretty close. I like to see each weapon as tools rather than weapons because there are certain enemies that need to be handled with different weapons. Say for instance, if you've got a, a fast fighting enemy, you'll need to use something a little bit quicker than just a two-handed sword. Um, if you're fighting something big maybe or something that there's loads of enemies around, you'll need something that can take out a load of people. Oh, did I die? Oh, he, he broke the shell right out of me. <laughs> he broke the shell right out of me. Now, as I said, the enemies are hard and unique in their own little way. They all have some very interesting attack stance. So if you're looking to get past them or beat them, there are two ways you can do it. Run like a little girl. Or study each attack these enemies have in order to beat them easily. So... When I say study, I mean really study and remember what they do because each enemy, again, each enemy are very unique with their attacks. And that comes down to uh, the next worst thing. <laughs> the bosses. Yeah, 
they, they don't mess around. As your character is a slow pace for attacking stuff and all that, they're a lot quicker and they are a lot smarter. So you are vulnerable to be attacked and killed a lot. Timing is the major thing in the game. When taking on a boss, I felt like the boss was learning from my moves. So after a while I was doing the repeated stuff, it ended up failing over time. And these bosses are like the MLG of bosses. So try not to do a spam attack because it will learn from that spam attack and literally take you to brown town. Alright, fucking Dark Souls style. You know what? I take my chances. <laughs> I take my chances, boys. <laughs> I didn't even scratch the power of it. That was not fun. <laughs> yes. Taste the truth. <laughs> As in Dark Souls, in order to level up, you'll need to kill enemies, retrieve souls, and try not to get killed, else you might have one chance to get them, and if you get killed again, you'll lose them forever. Same concept with Mortal Shells, as it's a Souls-like game, but instead of souls, you'll need to collect Tar and Glimpse, um, in order to upgrade your stats and abilities uh, for that armor. So leveling up yourself is not really a thing, but it's more of leveling up your gear, that's the thing. In overall, the game is really, really hard, and to me, I find it a lot harder than Dark Souls itself. Because this game is more focused on hand-to-hand -hand combat than it is of getting spells and loads of weapons to use and craft. Um, they really heavily focused on combat system. However, that combat system kind of failed. So, now this is the statement where I'm going to talk about my setbacks and just problems with Mortal Shell right now. So the first thing I'd like to say is the control schemes, it's very niched. I was running and I was ready to run in and attack an enemy, like run attack. But when I clicked left click, it literally just made my character stand there and just left, right, left, right. And I like to do a running attack, but yeah, that's that's literally a default button for any other combat system. A new default combat running system is the right click instead, the heavy attack. There is a 40% chance you will successfully hit them because if they decide to lag twitch a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit, you will literally miss that attack and get clapped by the enemy or maybe three that are just next to you. So with, with that being said, the enemy tracking is a bit weird but not great and that comes down to my second problem is the enemy movement. Although the animation is really cool, getting attacked from 180 degrees Degrees turn instantly is really really annoying and it's not just like their their actual move it literally turns the entire character body around to do an 180 without it doing an an animation that's really really annoying and they will do that no matter and for the game to be studied well and you can't even make that up and finding an opening they keep doing that I felt like that's not really a way to put in a game uh, when you roll right behind them to attack and they instantly 180 degrees turn <laughs> It's like it, it's, it's just not like they didn't turn they instantly go straight to 180 and then you know <laughs> Another thing I notice is enemy move in the enemy movement that is if you see an enemy just sitting there uh, half of the time, they will do, like, an animation to get up. Before you could run towards them. Before you can run towards them, they instantly throw an attack at you without, like, doing an animation of getting up. They literally just attack you right there. So my other problem is... Where do I go? I'm not a fan over the crazy uh, laws in games. I find, like, having an over-complicated law is pretty silly. Um... In my find, I, I like a good storytelling as well. I'm not a huge fan of over crazy stories, but after seeing the sister, I was lost on where to go. My only lead was the vision of weapons and gear. But with, with you know, compared to like Dark Souls 1, uh, uh, you know you'd had to get out the Undead Asylum. And once you get out, you talk to a guy that tells you to ring two church bells in order to open these gates. And 
At first, you just go to the battles, and then you start learning as you're progressing through. And that's what was cool about Dark Souls. You'd learn as you progress through the game. You study where you're at. With more shells, I still don't have a clue. Uh, another problem is the draw distance. It's not a huge problem. It feels like there's a problem that could be sorted after a first update. But when you see an enemy across the halfway to a campfire, and as you're walking up, out of nowhere, uh, their bodies, the entire, like, yeah, the, the, the enemies just randomly appear in front of you, right in front of you. It's not just a, any, like, long distance. They're literally in front of you, and uh, having them to appear like that is not great. Pairing and blocking. Now, there, I've got some frustrations with the blocking and pairing because you can't use a sword to block. I know, right? A heavily involved game in sword fighting doesn't have sword blocking. But instead, they, they backed it up with a body block, which is literally turn into stone when they attack you. Now, I felt like that's pretty lazy to do. That I felt that was lazy on themselves for that. But, uh, you know, for what I've seen, you can use it for your advantages, I guess. But once you use that block, um, you've got 10 seconds for it to recharge in order to do another block. Bit silly, I know. And the pairing, once you get this weird chains, uh, you will learn the arts of pairing. Uh, if I've said that right, that's great. If I haven't, my bad. So you're going to have to go through with me on that one. With pairing, in order to heal yourself, you'll need to parry. Now, pairing is a 70% chance that you will succeed or not succeed. So it's, it's pretty dumb. <laughs> I don't like this system. I'm not a huge fan of the system, although you can get uh, you can get food to heal yourself, it still doesn't justify how much health you get back because you only get little small points. But with with parrying, you do get to have the ability to drain an enemy with it. But then again, you need to wait for it to charge after thir like after I would say like five or ten seconds again in order to use that again. So now my final complaint that made me quit after playing eight hours of this game and I only just noticed is the quick slots. So in every game you'll have a quick slot so you can quickly move to an item to heal yourself or use it in an advantage. So you have basically a, quite a few to put in your quick slot. However, you can only use one from what I've tried doing and what I've tried putting in. I couldn't put any more quick slots in. I could only put the one. It doesn't tell you where to put it. It doesn't tell you how to put to put them in the quick slot it doesn't even have an indication of where to put it you have to guess in your inventory thing and that is horrible i'm surprised they left that in so when you go into your items you've literally trying to find oh yeah how to quick quick slot it. you think you click a drag no nope, that doesn't work you you eat that thing you really needed on that last fight so you try another button you accidentally eat that thing you needed in the game and then you get to the point that you've pressed nearly every button and once you finally figured out how to press enter and put it on quick slot one you've eaten pretty much everything you needed to get through the game and then you decide to take a practice run like i did and try and put it on quick slot two and you cannot put it on quick slot two that's what really annoys me with this game and that's what made me quit the game because i was so frustrated with that that they they didn't indicate of their own settings in their inventory and overall the game is absolutely hardcore it is like top of the range brutal the music the sounds the visuals the gameplay it's so eye-catching and it's and, and places to see are very exciting but there is a lot of problems with this game and it does need attention to detail there is not a lot of equipment of weapons in the game and i feel a lot more closer to quickly getting them which is sad because having a few weapons is not just fun and it just breaks the excitement of going to the place to get it however the skill upgrades kind of like rules over it so it's kind of a silver lining to that each enemy is very pretty and scary and exciting to see and that is fun but with the 180 turns and kind of their own glitchiness animations and twitchiness kind of brings it out of the immersive of combat fighting in the steam it's reviewed mixed and it deserves that rating considering the good and bad things of it at the same time i really hope they uh, have some kind of bug fixes soon because i want to go back to this game um 
but with that being said, I don't want to think about the quick like the quick slots or any other ridiculous things that should have been implemented in the game. As for the price tag, I'm really glad they made it $34, aka £25. If this was a full AA price tag, this would have been a different review. But considering the price tag of it right now, I'm happy with it. And I'm happy the way it is. And that's my review for Mortal Shells. Guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, this is my personal take, so take it as it, as it goes by. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please hit a like. What other Dark Soulsy games is there out there nowadays? There's quite a few, and I want to go and have a look at some of them. Because uh, Souls-like action roleplay games are interesting, and they're fun. Um, they're, they're, they focus a little bit more heavier on combat, which is good. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the new releases of these hardcore type games. That is me done. Corner shining out. You guys take care and have a wonderful day.